friends welcome to biology made easy today we are discussing a new chapter that is cell cycle and cell division i think this is the simplest chapter in biology but whenever questions come from this chapter students used to commit mistakes it is because of lack of the concept so i will try my best to clear the concept of the students now this cell division is a characteristic of all living organisms and the idea of cell division that means action the cells divide this idea was first given by rudolf virchow rudolf virchow gave one statement omnis cellula e cellula this is a latin term which means cells arise from pre existing cells cells arise from pre existing cells that means suppose one cell is there this can give rise to two cells again they can give rise to cells like this that means the cells if one cell is there from that uh, two cells four cells can be generated but these cells never arise de novo de novo means out of nothing nothing is there cells are not there cells cannot be produced out of nothing only if one cell is there from that it can give rise to two cells the four cells and so on so the idea of cell division was first given by rudolf virchow for what purpose this cell division is required because it is a characteristic of living organism that means it must be doing some work so the main functions are one is cell growth number 2 is cell reproduction number 3 is uh, you can write uh, tissue repairing now cell growth is one of the characters of all living organisms you think of all multicellular organisms the life cycle of all multicellular organisms start from a single cell that is zygote now this zygote divides into two cells and they are not separated then they give rise to four cells not separated then eight cells 16 cells and they give rise to embryo from this embryo the full organism is developed having millions and billions of cells so that is known as cell growth and this growth takes place because the cell divides come to the second point cell division is also required for reproduction of again unicellular and multicellular organism suppose you take any unicellular organism a single cell is there now it will divide into two cells and these two cells will be separate that means one cell gives rise to two cells and now individual cell is just like the full organism this is reproduction in case of lower organisms and in case of higher organisms during the production of male and female gametes there is also cell division meiosis and mitosis number 3 tissue repair always from the body of a multicellular organism some tissues are destroyed some are worn out and they require replacement even sometimes what happens there is injury in our body so that the injury is to be healed off suppose there is uh, some uh, uh, injury is there then uh, after one or two month take a medicine that is filled up how at that place new cells are generated it is because of cell division so these are the important characteristics of cell division it is a must for all these things now the next question comes to our mind under what what are the causes of this cell division what influence this cell division all well, right what are the causes number 1 decrease in surface is to volume ratio number 2 decrease in nucleocytoplasmic ratio and number 3 presence of mitogens these three cause cell division 
Now first you come to the decrease in surface volume ratio. Suppose you take a small cell whose dimension is only one centimeter. Now what is the surface volume ratio? It has six sides and each side is one square. So six sides means the surface is six. And what is the volume? Since one, one to the power cube, so one. That means the surface is to volume ratio. This is surface, this is volume. The ratio is six is to one. Now suppose the cell will increase in size. Now it will be bigger, bigger in size and the dimension is two. Now what is the surface volume ratio? Now each side is two centimeter. So each side is four square centimeter. And there are six sides. So the surface is 24 square centimeters. And what is the volume? Two to the power three. So it is coming eight. That means it is coming to three is to one. You see it was 6 is 1, now it is 3 is 1. Now again you see the uh, size increases. And suppose the dimension is 3. So each side is 9, 6 sides, so it will be 54. And what is the volume? 3 to the power 3, so 27. So 54 is to 27, that means 2 is to 1. That means you see when this cell was very small in size, the surface to volume was 6 to 1. When it increases 3 to 1, still further increases 2 to 1. That means as the size of the cell increases, the surface to volume ratio decreases. That means in each case you see the volume is 1, 1. But the surface is here 6, here 3, it is 2. That means with respect to the volume, the surface area decreases. As a result, the cell becomes inactive. Because the surface area, it depends upon the exchange of materials between the outside and inside of the cell. Then only the cell is active. The smaller the cell, the more activity is. The bigger the cell, it becomes inactive. So when it becomes inactive, if it will now divide, then two small cells will be produced. So the original condition will be restored. Again, they will be active. This is one of the reasons of cell division. Surface value ratio. Now you come to the second point. The second point is a decrease in nucleocytoplasmic ratio. This is one cell and uh, this is the nucleus. Then this is another cell, this is the nucleus. This is another cell and this is the nucleus. You see in each case the size of the cell is increasing, but the size of the nucleus remains constant. So, if we take ratio nucleus by cytoplasm, so here, here the cytoplasmic content is very less, so this ratio will be greater than this one, because here nucleus is same to this, but cytoplasmic content is uh, slightly more. In this case, if you take the nucleus is the same, but cytoplasm still more, that means we will get like this. That means smaller the cell, the nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is greater. And the bigger the cell, the nucleocytoplasmic ratio becomes smaller. So there is gradual decrease in nucleocytoplasmic ratio as the cell increases in size. So what happens? Now see the nuclear content always remains same. But this, when the cytoplasm content increases, the number of organelles increases, it requires more activities. And more activities means the uh, DNA molecules, they have to transcribe mRNA, proteins, enzymes, all those things. But when the volume becomes so, so big, the nucleus cannot control the activities of all, all these organelles. So it becomes inactive. Now, if it will divide into two cells, again the original condition will be restored. So this is the second reason. Now you come to the third point. The third point is the presence of a mitogens. What is mitogen? Mitogen means any chemical, any hormone which induces cell division. This is just opposite to mitotic poisons. Mitotic poison they will inhibit cell division, but mitogens means they will initiate cell division. That is the difference. Now the mitogens again, they are different for plants and animals. For plants, Usually, the mitogen is cytokine. 
and uh, all of you know that when cytokine is applied, it initiates cell division. So uh, that is uh, mitogen. In case of animals, the examples are lymphokines, epidermal growth factor, and platelet derived platelet derived growth factor these are in case of uh, uh, animals so when any of this is given either cytokine given to plants or any of this given to animals they also induce cell division so these are the causes of cell division now next Now, <clears throat> suppose uh, this is one cell. Now, the cell will divide into two. So, naturally, they will be small in size. Then, gradually, they will grow. And again, a stage will come, as we have discussed. Then, again, they will undergo division. That means, when these two cells are formed from this, here one division took place. Again, when these two cells divide, these are produced, that means again division takes place. That means if between these two consecutive divisions, the time period is known as generation time. Generation time. That means what is generation time? The time period between two successive cell divisions. This division took place, these are produced. Again, this division. Uh, takes place, that means again, they lose their entity because new cells are produced. That means in between two consecutive divisions, the time gap, the time period is known as the generation time. Then what is cell cycle? What is cell cycle? During this generation time, what happens? When the cells are produced by this division, initially the, smell, uh, the cells are very small in size. So gradually they will grow in size and for all the activities they will synthesize proteins, uh, enzymes, uh, all everything they will produce. And then they will come to a stage when they will divide. That means uh, during this generation time, there are some events, some actions that are taking place. So, the sequential series of uh, reactions that are taking place this, during this generation time is known as cell cycle. The sequence of events, the sequence of events that, again I have used the word sequence, that means uh, there is a definite sequence which will take place first, then, the, uh, then next word, then next word, in a definite sequence. So, the sequence of events that take place during this generation time is known as cell cycle. So, now it is clear to you what is generation time and what is cell cycle and under what conditions this cell divides. Now, if you switch over to the next part, this cell cycle means a complete term. Suppose this is the cycle. If it will start at a particular point, it will start at a particular point, then again it will go around and again it will be complete. This is known as cycle. Now this cell cycle is divided into two parts. One is interphase and the other is M phase. Previously it was thought that the interphase is the resting phase. This cell is taking rest, but this resting phase is a misnomer. Actually, the cell doesn't take rest at, at this time. During this time interphase, the cell prepares itself so that the cell will be able to divide. And this interphase takes place about 95% of the entire cell cycle time. And it, this is also known as non-dividing phase. 
इंटर फेज और नॉन डिवाइडिंग फेज बिकॉज दिस सेल इज नॉट डिवाइडिंग इट इज ओनली प्रिपेयरिंग इट सेल्फ टू डिवाइड फेल दम फेज इज नोन एज डिवाइडिंग फेज द एक्चुअल द एक्चुअल डिविजन टेक्स ओनली नेम फेज and this is about 90% of the cell cycle time when this is only 5% of the cell cycle time and there are some cells which are permanently in this interface like the neurons and the uh, cardiac cells cardiac cells means heart cells they are permanently in this interface they do not divide but there are some other cells they are occasionally divide and there are some cells which always divide that means they will enter to m phase now this uh, interface because it takes about 95% of the cell cycle time again it is divided into three sub stages and what are these three sub stages it is g1 s g2 this is g1 this is s this is g2 and this is m phase this m phase which is again divided into prophase metaphase anaphase telophase and cytogenesis prophase metaphase anaphase telophase and cytogenesis so this is known as uh, the cell cycle it will start from this point and again it will go to this that means one cycle is complete so this is uh, the basic idea why the cell has to divide and what are the different stages of cell division now the details of this different stages what is happening in each stage that we we'll discuss in the next video but i will give you here questions now you can write question number 1 You can write when the cell doubles in size. What happens to surface is to volume ratio. A choice it increases, B choice decreases, C choice constant. D choice none. Then second question you can write: Which of the following is not a mitogen? Which of the following is uh, not a mitogen? A choice cytokinin. B choice lymphokine, C choice GA gibberellic acid, D choice epidermal growth factor. After going through the video, you will be able to answer both the questions, and I hope you have enjoyed the video, and the rest of the things we will discuss in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a good day.